currently I'm doing a podcast about a show I did 30 years ago. My best friend who's doing it with me can remember everything and I can't remember anything. And it's really frustrating and it's upsetting to me. I can't remember when I started not remembering. <laughs> um, <laughs> the work you've done, you've probably memorized thousands of scripts. That's what that I work? say. I say, I've always said because people don't believe that I have a bad memory or they call me out on it. And I say, look, you know what? I use my short term memory all the time. So I feel like my short term memory has sort of taken over my long term memory, if that makes any sense. And I'm glad I'm here because maybe you can tell me if that theory is anywhere near the right one. Well, in the testing we did, it actually looked at short term memory and long term memory. Mm -hmm. So we'll see the difference. <laughs> One of the things that hurts the memory centers in the brain is chronic stress. And I've been blessed to see a number of young superstars. And the level of stress that is just constant and unrelenting can sort of shrink that part of the brain. Hmm. So it's called the hippocampus. Have mm -hmm. you heard that term before? No. So it's Greek for seahorse <laughs> because in the brain, it actually looks like a seahorse. Chronic stress shrinks and you make 700 new baby seahorses every day or stem cells in the brain. Oh. And so working your brain like you did is good, right? Always remembering scripts. But being bombarded with all that stress can clearly make things worse. Mm -hmm. If your emotional circuits are up, then you, you always sort of feel stirred up mm -hmm. and it interferes with you getting memories mm. into long term storage. So one of the things I'm known for is imaging. Mm -hmm. I love to look at the brain. Mm -hmm. We did a study on you called SPECT, and SPECT looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how your brain works and basically shows us three things. Good activity, too little, or too much. Okay. And if it's too little, that can disrupt how you feel and how you think. If it's too much, it can disrupt how you feel and how you think. So here's yours. Oh, it looks pretty good. And for your age, because you know with brains you always have to think of how old is the person, is it male, is it a female? You'll be stunningly beautiful. Oh, thanks. Except you can see right here in the front, you have a dent. <laughs> That's and that fun. likely came from either the light falling on you or probably the jet ski little bit low right here, which is part of where the hippocampus is. And if you do everything I ask you to do four months from now, your brain can actually work like this and be much fuller, fatter, healthier. Now, let's look at the inside. I'm very busy inside. And so, when I saw it, I went, oh dear. What's going on in there? Jeez. So this is an area called your basal ganglia. It goes with anxiety and really working way too hard. And to constantly remember things, you can't be having your brain sending interrupt signals. Mm -hmm. And your brain sending interrupt signals. It's just interrupting what you're thinking what you're learning and if we can calm it down I mean that's really the important thing is you know I want to fix this calm this didn't you say you always live with this anxious tense oh yeah feeling My anxiety is but what if we got rid of that Ooh, that might feel good that would feel calmer I want you to just love you let's make it better mm -hmm.